All right, number 10. Your house client has certain restrictions on their site that include exterior siding materials, slope of the roof, and permitted uses for exterior spaces. Where are these restrictions likely from? Well, we just talked about easements and, and it doesn't really seem to make sense from that standpoint. Um, zoning department, there are a few examples. I remember like uh, Aspen and places like that have a lot of that kind of stuff in their zoning, but the vast, vast, vast majority of zoning wouldn't get into that kind of level of detail. Uh, market study would be a potentially interesting, it's kind of like uh, amenities stuff that we just talked about. But the actual answer here is covenants. So that's a word that's worth knowing. Covenants are when a private development, uh, think of it as like a gated community, and all the houses are all brick, or all the houses uh, are clabbered siding, and they all have pitched roofs, no flat roofs, or something like that. That means they're following the covenant. So it's a, again, it's writing with the deed. So it's something that you would have to respond to. You can't just ignore a covenant because it's contractual, um, but it's not from the zoning code. It's not a municipality run thing. Uh, so covenant, that shows up often on these kinds of exams. Okay, we got one last bonus one here. Um, this is directly from one of the NCARB ones. And I just put this in here because this is totally the kind of thing that uh, um, they are likely to ask in some form. And so I just want to make sure you don't forget this part of it. All right, the most appropriate strategy for predicting and preventing conflicts between the architectural and engineering documents is to hold regular coordination meetings. Um, I do love the idea of uh, having the owner uh, review the drawings. Um, that would be pretty amusing. But the answer is absolutely A. Uh, that they want you to regularize the process so that there's a clear way to, for people to see what the issues are, to understand each other's agendas, so that everything can kind of meld together. So it, for a bigger project, you might be doing it every two weeks for the whole process of uh, schematic and, and maybe early design development, and then maybe a little bit less than that uh, through construction documents, and then a lot again when you're getting the coordination worked out. In other situations, uh, you know, for a smaller project, it might be just you know two important meetings, something for a house or something like that. So what regular means uh, is really dependent on the situation, uh, but the idea that you're creating a system of communication is hugely important, uh, and that's absolutely something that NCARB and AIA would uh, uh, want you to be thinking about. Uh, you're looking for information on that kind of thing, check out the professional handbook, um, the uh, architect's professional handbook that's produced by AIA because uh, they'll talk about those kinds of issues uh, in there pretty clearly. All right, how do we do? Awesome, so <clears throat> we're, uh, we're down to two lucky winners here. Looks like we have Kristen L and Robert uh, P. Uh, you two uh, made it all the way to the end. Way to go, uh, Kristen and, and Robert. 100%, looks like um, I think it was that question, uh, let's see, which was it? Question six here that really sort of uh, got everybody. Um, so we have a, a ton of uh, questions here. Maybe we'll take two of them here before we, um, before we head out. Um, let's see here, let's grab a good one. Um, this is from Lori H. She says, isn't occupancy and use considered part of the zoning of the building? Why use um, you know one specific word instead of the broader term in that? Uh, in that question, where um, uh, where you allowed you know both occupancy and use to be um, the the reason that I'm sort of loose about using those two terms is that in different codes um, they'll use occupancy, in other codes they'll use use, but also in a lot of the guidebooks they'll kind of use them interchangeably. Um, effectively, like you'll find that one code will use one of those words. Um, and so you, whatever, whatever that code is, you'll follow that, use that word. But um, the gist of it is the idea behind it, which is um, what is the building for? How will it actually be used? Because it impacts everything. It impacts uh, egress, it impacts uh, placement on the site, it impacts uh, uh, the relationship to the construction systems. It, it is the driver of, from a code standpoint, of everything. Uh, any code reviewer, the first thing they're going to uh, look for is what's the use. Awesome. And then going back to question number two, um, here's a question. Working on school projects, there are cases when there's a construction manager and the project is still 
uh, put through a design bid build process? Why would construction manager not be the answer, the correct answer, when one of the items in the question is calling for the most cost effective project delivery? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, and I, I think that actually is true. Um, but that's a more specific, I, we could also go through it. There's a number of um, uh, municipalities that are testing ideas about uh, doing design build um, as a way to save money, um, as a way to reduce uh, levels of oversight that they have to do. There's a bunch of ways that people are trying out different things, uh, but the vast majority of the um, project is, uh, of projects like that are gonna be um, pretty straightforward design, bid, build. And part of the reason that there's a little bit of confusion on that is the term construction manager. Um, occasionally, it will be exactly like what you just said, um, that the construction manager will be, in fact, a construction manager uh, that's hired with a, in order to help bring in, um, uh, bring in uh, important information early on into the process but the cost effectiveness would still be the fact that you were able to bid it out to multiple bidders. So the construction manager would be there, but the real issue for uh, the cost effectiveness to know that you have something that's cost effective is because of the design bid build. But then the second part of that is you'll have a lot of people who are called construction managers, but they're actually like working for the facilities end of the municipality or something and so they are managing the construction but they are not um, necessarily contractual construction managers uh, in that sort of typical uh, CM contract sort of way um, so uh, it's a really good question and it's absolutely true but remember the point here is not to find the little examples uh, where you can kind of kind of get in between things is what what's the gist of what's going on they're sort of expecting you to kind of have a general understanding and in this case it's about price it's about um, a municipal process um, there's going to be a whole series of things that are going to come up that are all about design bid build and in fact the bids are probably going to be sealed bids there's going to be a whole process to it um, but occasionally there'll be other versions of that Awesome. All right. Well, we're going to close it up there. So thank you, Mike. Thanks to everybody who've tuned in and um, uh, submitted your questions today. Really a lot of good questions. Um, if you'd like to attend our next ARE live broadcast where we feature recently licensed architects and their stories about how they passed all seven exams, uh, if you visit blackspectacles.com slash podcast to register. Um, and just like today's episode, you'll have a chance to ask questions and share your thoughts with Mike and the, and the group for live feedback during the broadcast. To learn more about our ARE exam prep curriculum, go to blackspectacles.com where you can try out any of the free uh, uh, course videos. And for those of you who are ready to start preparing for the ARE, and if you've already an AIA member, you can use coupon code 52516PPPLIVE uh, to get a 15% discount for the entire duration of your uh, ARE exam prep membership. We've already talked about who won the free t-shirts. I did mention at the beginning that we were gonna be giving out a free unlimited um, one month membership. And so let's do that. We had 50 uh, folks who submitted their questions before uh, noon today. So on our famous random.org uh, website here, we're gonna generate a, a number and let's see who we have as our winner. Go ahead and hit it. 23. So 23, who was number 23? 23 was, <laughs> wow, uh, Lori H uh, who asked a couple of good questions today. So Lori, Way uh, to go, Lori. congratulations. You've won a, um, uh, a free, uh, ARE and uh, software tutorial membership for one month. Um, so congratulations. Uh, we'll, we'll be uh, sharing an email with you as well as the folks who won the free t-shirts um, later today or probably tomorrow morning. Um, and uh, just a reminder to everybody else, uh, thank you for sending in your mock exam questions uh, and just make sure that you submit your answers uh, before that noon central deadline next time uh, so you can be entered into our, um, our drawing for the next session. And for those of you who are ready to start preparing for the ARE, and if you're already an AIE member, you can use coupon code 52516PPPTW to get a 15% discount for the entire duration of your uh, ARE prep membership. And then finally, please leave a comment below the video to let us know what you think and share any suggestions you may have. I promise we'll read every word that you write and use them to tune our next episodes. So thanks for watching. Thank you.